Oh, oh, boy, oh, TV. TV. They scared, but I'm not. They don't like comentario. Y suscribe. Brian Windhorst decided to compare Lynn Sanity to Brun Sanity. Nobody ever used the term Brun Sanity. That's how corny you know this thing is, because nobody said Brun Sanity, bro. Brunson Burner, there's so many names for this, man. He even got the Shelly. Anyway. The thing about it is the crowd believes in Brunson. They know Brunson's going to carry them home. And that, you know, connection with the crowd and Brunson is what, you know, we're going to be talking and showing this run in 20 years. I mean, Lynn Sanity. Oh, wow. Sanity was crazy. This is run sanity. And I don't see it stopping anytime soon. And we're going to have more special nights in the garden, I think, in the very near future. I don't like um, the way you said that, Brian. Yeah. That was okay. Oh, fuck well, that. that was corny. Yeah. It was corny. Brun said it was yeah, it was because we gotta be careful about this. And I just spoke on uh in the beginning, I was comparing like you know how television and what the Willis Reed moment was today, 54 years ago. Um, what that meant and why that is legendary, why it lasted so so I don't want to get take away Lynn Sanity's moment those two weeks. It is what it is, but it is referred to as this lightning in a bottle two week moment. It is. We do all reminded of the Miami Heat locking them up, and it's like another little slight to the New York Knicks fan base for calling us delusional and like we don't know what we're talking about because Jalen Brunson is doing his thing and he's actually following through with what exactly we've been promoting the last year and a half. I don't. That's what I don't like about it. It's just lazy, and he's a reporter. And again, this is ESPN doing this. They don't really know how to. It, I think it really hit the NBA by storm. And they don't know how to promote it because they're usually told what to say in different kind of ways. Because we know how this works. We're on YouTube. We see what works for us, what names don't, what names do work for us. So we get that. So I'll put the name in the thumbnail on, on a go live and we talk about whatever we want to talk about. Because I know my people flee all ball, Dom. Y'all going to carry the weight in terms of what, you know, how to talk about basketball, what to talk about basketball. I personally enjoy speaking to you guys about basketball. So this thing's going to be fun. Y'all motherfuckers wouldn't even be hanging out with each other at ESPN if it wasn't for that Disney Mickey Mouse money. And this is what happens. You come up with lazy ant talks like talking points like this. Brun sanity? This ain't no two weeks, dog. It's been two years, three again. Three years in the make flee. I asked the question yesterday. What player has left an MVP caliber star to become an MVP himself? Damn near. An MVP caliber player themselves. Only he left Luka Doncic and became guy, an MVP caliber guy. Right. Only guy I can only guy I could think of is James Harden. The only guy I can think of who left a two. MVP, yeah, two, obviously two, but that was a completely unique situation. But to answer the question, like only guy that comes to mind quickly is James Harden leaving Kevin and becoming who he was. Uh, out here in Houston. So, um, but to be honest with you, obviously Brunson is not the scorer that James Harden was for that, for that, for that period, right? The effect that he had on basketball, right? We always talk about me and you have got gotten into it on several occasions. And I think we both agree that, you know, at, at one point it became unwatchable. I did not enjoy watching James Harden play basketball, although he was a bucket, right? Produced a lot of wins. It wasn't enjoyable for me to watch him do what he was doing. Um, it is enjoyable to watch Jalen Brunson do what he's doing, right? I'm always talking about Jalen Brunson leads the league in dribbles. The amount of times the basketball is dribbled, Jalen Brunson leads the league. But it doesn't feel like it from a from a from a watching standpoint. I know that it's a fact, right? I can't, I can't lie about the numbers, right? And so James Harden had led the league in dribbles too. But you felt that. Like you felt how high isolation basketball that dude used to play um, when he did start moving it, right? When he did start leading the league and assist, right? While he is averaging over 30, right? It started to look beautiful because Houston could shoot threes, the ball moved, right? It, start, it looked beautiful. And you're starting to see that now with Brunson 
as Josh Hart is becoming a more reliable shooter, as Deuce McBride is becoming a more reliable shooter, Dante DiVincenzo becoming a more reliable shooter, uh, getting OG Ananobi in spots where he can get creative and get to the rim or, or knock down open shots, right? Like, Brunson's playmaking ability is starting to shine a lot more. He's a guy that he's going to do, like, like, like Winhorse said, we love him. We, we think he's going to take us home every night. But don't get it messed up. Throughout that 48 minutes, there's so much more that's going on with our basketball team besides Jalen Brunson. Josh Hart is, an, is, is everything you want out of a basketball player. He does that. Dante DiVincenzo, anytime he's out there, 135 million percent. Like, all of these guys play with a level of tenacity, sense of urgency, togetherness, toughness that if Jalen Brunson didn't have that, we would struggle. So, you know, it's it's a big it's a big shout out to him, but it's also a big shout out to who he's playing next to and how much they know like we got to make this young man look good. We got to do everything to not be able to tear him down. And you you have you can't tear him down cuz he's doing those first two games against Philly, everybody was nervous like, "Uh-oh." What's going on with Jalen Brunson? Is he worn out? Is he tired? He doesn't have the wheels. What's going on? He got that second win while we were able to get us to a 2-0 lead. With him shooting 27% from the field, we were able to get to a 2-0 lead. And he said, I got y'all. I'm going to take, take us home. We're a better team than people give us credit for, man. We really are. Uh, led, led by Brunson. And we were never led by Lynn. <laughs> Even though those two no. weeks uh no. it seemed like it, but after that heat thing, it was just it was a, a debacle. Um they threw Greece. Rio, they threw Rio at him, they threw D Wade at him, they threw Braun at him, they threw Shane Baddy at him, they threw everybody at him, right? And it's not like he was getting cooked. It looked like guys was taking turns. Like, let me I'm licking my chops. Yeah, let me get him. Let him his next three possessions is me. Not Rio move. I want it. They were like, they were, and he was in hell. He was in hell, and that Lynn Sanity no more. After that, right. no more. And I've seen Braun do that several times. Braun did it against uh, Porzingis the second time with the New York star. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was because Melo was still here, and they, like, they were intentionally like, yo, we're going to get him out of here. Mm -hmm. Like that, It seems to be a that's, thing. That's, I'm, the flip, that's the flip cup game. Yeah, when they were that's riding the, the train and everything. That's the flip bottle game, yeah. Yeah, riding the, um, the New York City transit uh, mm -hmm. trains. And then the second time I saw him like blatantly do that was against Luka Doncic. And that's when he gave him a pound. Like, oh, nah, you, you're the real deal. They beat him up badly in Dallas. It was a close game. Then he met Luka missed the game winner. But you can see they were like trying to feast upon him. And they kind of did that this year with Brunson. They were double teaming him a lot. And, and LA. LeBron. Against LA. Against LA. Right. We lost with that Lake. game at home. Right. Because LeBron guarded Brunson at the, at, for the final play. Or one of the final plays. So... We get what everybody's saying. He's a little guy. He's Mighty Mouse. Mm -hmm. Um, but stop, stop making these comparisons, man. This ain't no damn like that's just a, a lazy comparison. Lynn Sanity was just not this. He was proven to be not this in such a shorter amount of time, and we've had too many experiments, too many challenges, too many times that we all right. Is this the real deal? That's what that's what it was with me, Flea. I know I can when I'm behind something, I usually just feel what I'm saying, and I can get really passionate. But to me, for me to be this passionate about it. Nah, he's. I gotta hate. I gotta hate on you first. Mm -hmm. I gotta hate on you first. Yeah. Hold on, let me see what this guy's about. And with yeah. Brunson, it was like it was hard to hate on because of, again, even the contract. Everything about Brunson is so much more. It lands differently in New York, especially for a fan, because they were trying to remember J.R. Smith and Carmelo kind of spoke out of turn, out of pocket about Lynn's contract. But at the same time, it spoke to. Yo, hold on, you're making too much money, bro. So maybe some of the fan remember I'm arguing with, uh, we're arguing amongst each other. Yo, I ain't giving them no thirty million dollars. You crazy? So I don't care if you dress it up as a poison pill country, this, that, and the third. No, we're not gonna give him that money. So a lot of these things was becoming after the Miami Heat game. It was almost like resent attached to Jeremy Lin after the the Lin Saturday with Brunson. He comes in with a contract that's like, bro, he ain't even top ten contract for point guards in the league. How is this expensive? He comes in there, kind of sneak him in there. He got his godfather as, as the as the general manager. Like, hold on, let's let's see. You better do something because you got the fix in here in New York City. And he's done nothing but prove himself uh, to be great. 
Baby, and they said we overpaid him. You remember that? Right. They said we overpaid Brunson. They said we're I gonna, know. I never we're thought gonna that. Hate, we're gonna hate that deal for giving him one hundred million dollars. He's the. This, this is the most. This is the friendliest deal in the league right now. He's outplayed the deal <laughs> in the first Already. two games that he played with us. Like we was like, whoa, okay, we got a huge discount on this dude. Right? Like, we got it. We got it. We. we we got a huge, we got a huge, let's be grateful. New York Knicks fan base, please be grateful for what Jalen Brunson has done for us the last two seasons. And I mean, hold on, kudos to you for bringing up James Harden because that was crazy. James Harden was a top five pick, top 10 pick for OKC? Yes. He, yes. Damn, he was, see, I, want, I wanted to surprise you and remember the school, but I don't remember the school he played for. Arizona State. Oh, oh no, Arizona's where Gilbert Arenas went to and yes. Lou, 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 how do you say his name, the coach? Oh, uh, Lou Alton. Lou Alton. Lou Alton. So, okay. so Arizona is is Gilbert, Richard Jefferson, Channing Fry, mm-hmm. Luke Steve Walton, Kerr. Steve Kerr, uh, Damon Stoudemire, Khalid Reeves. Those guys. Okay, so the but a great point about bringing up Arizona James Harden. State, Arizona State, James Harden, Eddie House. Uh, uh, another great Arizona State. I'm missing some guys, but those two guys jump out early. Those two guys. But it was a great point to bring him up because I, I couldn't remember someone who just left the MVP and became an MVP caliber guy. Mm. Um, there was something around James Harden by the time he got to Houston, though. It was like, yo, this might be even more so than than, than Jeremy. I mean, he was already uh, – Harden was already Ginobili 2.0. Yeah. Brunson yeah. wasn't quite that, but it was like we like we overlooked some things. Like even when uh, – we sound like a broken record – Helping the Mavericks win those three games when Luka was out the first round against the against the against, against the, Utah against Utah, right? Because he beat okay. Donovan Mitchell back to back seasons. Mm-hmm. So this is the third season he's out of the first round. Harden kind of struggled being the lead dog like that, and this guy made up for made up for not having the lead dog, and then comes to New York and becomes the lead dog. Yeah. So like this this Brun Sanders they're just lazy, just lazy. They don't know what to do, man. They really don't. We're coming up with these lists, uh, these these, these fake. I mean, got LeBron's number three most valuable according, according to them, and they got his schlep, his his uh his lackey on ESPN talking about Jeremy Lin. This is Jeremy Lin all over again. His schlep. Did I use that correctly? Let me look that up. Real. Schlep. S C H L E P. S C H Schlep. Schlep. Oh. A haul or carry a tedious, difficult journey. Another term for schlepper. <laughs> <laughs> It works. She, Go to, forget it. It works. Yeah. She slept her groceries home. <laughs> Something heavy or awkward. Yeah, Brian. Brian, when you all of uh, slept heavy and awkward. <laughs> Come on. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Put your glasses back on, baby. Put your glasses back on. Oh, oh, boy, TV. They scared, but I'm not. They don't like commentario. Y suscribe.